everyone and welcome to another uh, Friday art project with myself. I'm Autumn, the education coordinator here at Studio 23 and I have with me as a guest today our children's instructor Sue Zoltan I, and uh, Sue is going to take you guys through this really um, really fun project that she has that is inspired by um, the artist Jeff Koons you're probably familiar with him. If you're not familiar with the name, I'm sure you are familiar with his art. Yeah. He's uh, very famous for creating his balloon dogs, which are these large, just massive stainless steel um, metallic balloon dogs, basically, right? And, and where did you say you can see some of these around the world? Uh, they're all over in New York City, and then there's a uh, museum in Los Angeles. Oh, the Broad Museum. The Broad Museum, yep. yep, in Los Angeles. And I have a picture of one here, actually, to show what this looks like. So here is one of Jeff Koons' actual pieces. So now it's probably looking a little familiar to you. So these are really large-scale stainless steel pieces that the artist Jeff Koons has created. So um, today, Sue is going to walk you through this really fun, and I, we have an example here, this is so cool. This is a mixed media project that she has that she's going to walk you through to create your own version of the Jeff Koons balloon dogs. Um, so if you don't mind, Sue, I will adjust the cameras and, sure. and you can get started and then we can talk. Sure. I was just going to show oh, that sure. I actually have one here so that everybody can see what these look like and I did make this one and this is one of the things that we'll be doing in art camp so I just thought everybody would get a kick out of seeing that oh that's fun I love that yeah and it, what I love that it is um that you're using a different medium for right. art it's not right. just paper and paint and which, an everyday object which is what pop art is yes and what Jeff Koons does yeah, yeah. and I love that because as much yeah. as we love doing paper and paint and and we do, but it's fun to mix it up a little bit. It is. So um, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the cameras then, and I'm going to let you go for it. And then if you're, if you're good, we can talk a little bit about sure. um, children's art and um, the summer art camps that are coming. Sure. Okay, That's good. I am going to talk about just quickly what um, I've used here today, although we are, as I said, we're going to be doing this project with, uh, uh, during art camp. Um, now the, the things that I have here aren't necessarily what everybody else has, and that's okay because, um, you know, this is, a, this is a mixed media collage project. and. Um, Collage just means to glue. So you know that we're going to be some do, doing some gluing onto a background. And again, that's what's done here is gluing onto a background. So this has been made and glued onto it. So uh, mixed media can be anything, but I today happen to be using, I'm going to use some oil pastels. You see I have a big 12 by 18 sheet of paper, and then I have a piece, and this is just sulfite paper. And I have a piece of construction paper, just plain construction paper, but you can use any kind of paper. So this is going to be the basis for my balloons. I also have, uh, besides my oil pastels, which is one of my mediums, I also have my watercolors. And then I also have a little bit of uh, acrylic paint here today. And another thing I have that is a medium is, which people don't always think of, is I have a marker. So I have a lot of things here that I'm going to be using today, <clears throat> and that's why we call it mixed media. So if you didn't have oil pastels um, or any kind of fancy acrylic paint, could you just use crayons yes. and craft paint? Yes, absolutely. Crayons, craft paint. Um, just your markers instead of using paints you could do the whole thing actually with crayons 
um, I do have some school glue with me also because when I glue on to a background that I've used, <coughs> excuse me, oil pastels on, I like to use the school glue instead of a, 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 a glue stick, but you could also use a glue stick too. So um, anytime that you're going to do a, a collage that has a background, um, of course, we're going to we're gonna start with our collage pieces first because I wanna have those dried and ready to go. We could do it actually either way. But um, what I did is when you look at the basic shapes of this balloon animal, you can see that they're just ovals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what I've done <coughs> is I've just made an oval and this one's a little bit longer, but I'm just gonna do mine all the same length. So I've made an oval and I'm going to do, and I'm gonna do seven of these. So I'm just gonna take something and um, trace around it. I don't have my pencil here with me, but that's okay. I'm gonna to have to go around my marker anyway. Ooh, and here I thought I had everything here, okay. So I've got a pink piece of paper because that's what color that my balloon is gonna be, but they come in so many different colors. And so you can see all I'm doing is tracing around this. And then I'll repeat it again, I'll trace around it again. And this way they're all gonna be the same size, it's easy for me to do. So I'm gonna keep tracing until I have seven of these on here. Now I also de decided I had to have, just to make it look authentic, I needed to have this end piece where your balloon is tied off and there, there's always that little bit of tail that's there that's not inflated. So what I did for that is I simply drew a rectangle shape and then that tail shape. So that's what I put on my paper and let me show you here. So I ended up putting those shapes on here. I have seven of them and I have these shapes and you can see I've already started to outline too. So we want to get that nice <clears throat> broad outline. That's a really big part of what pop art is. So we have, we want that nice broad dark black outline. So I've got my marker and I'm just going to take it before I even cut anything out and I can go ahead and just go around my piece. And it doesn't have to be perfect, which is again, the wonderful part about this type of art. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna then outline each one of those pieces, right? So again, before I even cut these things out, because I'm gonna let them dry and then I'm gonna cut them out, I also wanna put on some shading and highlighting. So if you look at that picture again, you can see that it makes it look um, very metallic because you can see all the highlight on here. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna put on some of our balloon color, which is our red, thank you, and some of our white. So on one side, I want red, which is my shaded area, and the other side, I want white, which will be my highlight. And just really simple to do. So I have my acrylic paint here, and I'll put my red on first. So I'm gonna dab in there, and on one side, I'm just gonna dab on some red. Don't make it perfect because it's shading and highlighting, and that's never gonna be perfect. So it's just basically a straight line that follows the shape, is that it how it is? It is. Okay. And you don't have to, like I said, you don't even have to fill it in all the way, okay? So you're gonna do that on every piece. Let me clean my brush off here and show you, we're just gonna do the same thing with the white. And there's a lot of people that have done this actual project. Um, I love so many of these sites that have done this um, and everybody gives you kind of a new perspective on it. So is this kind of project, is this, um, a, would this be like a typical project that you would be doing in your children's summer art camp? Oh yeah, because we love to do collage 
And that's what we're going to be doing with this here. So you can see now that I finished and I put some white on there too. So I'm just going to let this dry. I'm going to set this out of the way. So then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um, put in your background. And again, use what you have. Don't go out and get something. Use what you have, okay? So for my background, I've decided, now your background could be any place with this, and that's what I love about working with kids, the creativity. So for my background, I decided to take my dog downtown, okay? But you could do something just so creative with this. Maybe yours is out in the farmland. Maybe you're going to um, a county fair with yours. Um, and maybe your dog is going to a movie theater. Everybody's in a hurry to go to movie theaters and restaurants now that we're no longer stuck inside. But mine is going downtown, and this is what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna draw a background. And um, so if I have a, a, maybe a sidewalk here, and I've just got my black oil pastel, and I'll just put, a, put some sidewalk lines in there, right? And then I could draw some buildings. So let's say I'm going to do a building here. And um, maybe um, I'll do maybe 3D, maybe some 2D. I'll put uh, maybe a building here. And I'm going to do this rather quickly, but just so you get the idea of what I'm doing. And then I could maybe put a tree next to it here. We could put some windows on there. And I think I put a sign on mine here that just said that it was a, um, a pet shop. So I put, I think, pet. Let's see if I can do this upside down. <laughs> and I'll show you what it looks like. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in a bunch of, of details here. And yes... The thing about collaging is, yes, you are going to be covering up some of your details. And that's not a bad thing. All right. So I'm putting in some details here. I might want to um, put in a tree here. I could do some coloring in because these are oil pastels, or some of it I could just leave not colored in um, because we're gonna be going over it with our watercolor, which makes it a resist. Um, let's see here. I could put um, some, let's say, uh, bushes in here because it's they're downtown and we know our downtown likes to look pretty again so what I'm gonna do and then I will add as much of my oil pastels on here if I that I want to so maybe I want to add a little bit of white into my windows because any of the kids that are watching that have been in my classes before know what this is gonna look like when we add our paint to it so once you get your background done the way you want it to, and again, you can be really creative with where that background is going, then you're gonna take your paints, and I'm using, again, I'm using um, just, just simple pan uh, watercolors here. And I'm just gonna take this, and I'm just gonna start painting, so. I can just start putting in the color I want for this building here. And you can always mix your colors. Here you see I've got a couple different colors going on. So I have a question for you while you're working. Mm -hmm. So I know that um, you have you have kind of a theme here with this project, which is an art, famous artist. Right. And I remember when you did your spring break art camp that there was a theme to that as well it was around the world so can we expect the same from I know we have what we have four different sessions four different sessions yep for the children's art camp um, it w running the first session one running June 21st to the 25th right session two running July 12th to the 16th uh, session three running July 26th to the 30th and session four running August 2nd to the 6th so can we expect 
four different themes for all different yes. art camps? So that's what's fun about it is there'll be four different themes. The first one will have this particular project in it. And um, the theme for the first one is animals. So that's going to be a lot of fun and there's so much we can do with that. Um, so the other themes, um, I won't give away too much, but I can tell you one of them is going to be food and one is going to be places that we're going to go. So, um, so even though we use the same, a lot of the same mediums, um, during art camp, all my art camps are different. I don't repeat any projects. So ideally you could even sign up for all four and you'd be doing different projects. Yes, every most definitely. Week. And I have had students that have signed up for all of them and just had such a great time because they were comfortable with the mediums but they knew it was a different project. Gotcha. So, and so it was so much fun. So I would keep painting. I'd get this all painted in and I'm gonna show you what it looks like through the magic of being pre-prepared here. <laughs> hmm. So here I have my background and you can see that I've done a downtown. And again, you could get so creative with your background. Um, a favorite place. Maybe your dog went to school. So there's so many things you could do with it. So then we're going to do the collage part of it. So I've got my, I've got my uh, glue here and I've got my pieces here. And so what you would do is just start gluing. Now when, because of the fact that I put an out or a a shadow and a highlight on each of these pieces, I want to put them a specific way, don't I? Because I want to make sure that my shadow is going down, but that my, um, yeah, let's start that here, but that my highlight is going up because that's where my light source is coming from. So then I'm just going to keep taking these and putting my glue on them. And again, I'm watching which way I'm putting my pieces down. My highlight is going towards the top. So I've got the body part there, the neck part there. I'm going to put my head on there. Keep going with this. So then with your summer art camp, I know it's an all-day Monday through Friday camp. Uh, I think it runs 8.30 to 3.30. Yeah, 8.30 to 3.30. So, right, will, so will they just be doing art all day long, or do they get a chance to get outside? No, we, we always go outside, which is fun. And we try to always go outside, weather permitting, especially at lunchtime. And then we do some running around and playing some games outside, too, because... Um, it gives you a chance to get rid of the kids to get rid of some of that energy and what's in, what's fun to know too is that um for uh, parents that this is um this you'll have all your supplies here so there's nothing you will have to bring so just bring a lunch and be yes. ready to create yes gotcha. except for a lunch that's all you have to bring everything else is going to be here for you which is really nice. It's a time saver for the morning when you're trying to get the kids going in the morning. Okay. And I was looking at my book and I just happened to notice, and you'll, you'll want to know since you teach that um, the session one is actually almost full. Oops. Okay. Yeah, so if session one is something that you would like to um, sign your child up for, um, you would want to do that really quickly, actually, because, um, like I said, it, there's I think there's maybe maybe two spots left. And again, that session one runs June 21st to the 25th. Yeah, so the kids have an idea, and hopefully we'll be able to do another one of these before the sessions and give the kids kind of an idea of what's coming up in that session. Oh, for sure. So you see, I just put the tail on, and I'll I'll bring it up closer so you can see it. And now I have that piece that goes in the front. That's where we've tied the balloon off. Let's see if I can get this to stay here. My fingers are a little bit sticky at this point. So you can see now, this is where I've taken my balloon 
my dog balloon too. You can see now where mine's gone too. Well, thank you so much for doing this demo. Uh, I feel like this is a project that Jeff Coons could, you know, would be <laughs> proud of as well. Um, thank you so much again, Sue, for joining us. And um, like I mentioned, if you are interested in signing your students up for any of Sue's four summer art camps, we have a spot for them here at Studio 23 and we'd love to register them. Give us a call or check us out on our website as well. And um, that's it for today. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and we will see you again soon. Bye.